Hello! It is the week of Thanksgiving. I'm making a nice big pot of French onion soup. I had a French wine dinner just a week or so ago, and this was on the menu. I hadn't made it in, geez, maybe two or three years, and I needed a, a little help jogging my memory. Uh, Chef John Fabian from the Hilton um, just walked me back through the process again, and it was so good that I felt like I needed to make it again. So here we are. What do you need to make French onion soup? So of course, first you have to start with onions, and a lot of them. If I look like I'm crying, that's why. So I have about three pounds of the giant onions. If you can find those, that's the best for you to use. I have about four nice big shallots. I have four cloves of garlic. And then up front, I have about three leeks. So leeks, if you don't typically cook with them, uh, grow in sand. And you need to be careful about the cleaning process for them. So you're gonna wanna cut off the root part of the shallot. You're gonna wanna cut off the majority of the greens of the shallot, and then you're gonna wanna split it in half. So what you're doing is you're going to look in between all these different layers of the leek and you're looking to see how sandy or dirty they may be. If you pull them apart and they're crystal clear, you're good to go. If you find a lot of grit and sand, make sure you wash them because you're not going to want that to end up in your food. And then everything, as you can see, I just did a nice rough chop about a quarter of an inch on each of those items. Other things that you're going to need. So we're, we pulled, uh, excuse me, peeled all of those onions and we had all of the extra skins and scraps if you will from them you're gonna want to make if you can your own broth for french onion soup so i'm making chicken marsala tonight i started by taking all of the stems out of those mushrooms and threw them in this pot so i'm not going to use them in the marsala but they're going to come in handy here for this stock then all of the extra trimmings from all of those onions and garlic even even down to these you know just little peels Put in that pot. We're going to cover this with water and we're going to simmer it for about an hour or more. If you have all day, by all means do so. I don't have a lot of time, so I'm going to give it an hour. But again, cover that with water, put it on the boil, uh, on the burner and let it simmer. If you don't have time to make your own stock or even if you make your own stock and it's not quite enough, beef broth is always perfectly fine to use in its place. I like to use bone broth because it's more concentrated. If you can get low sodium, absolutely do. You're going to need sherry for deglazing the pan. You're going to need thyme. So if you, again, have the time to sit there and pick all the little leaves off the tent, by all means do so. I never have that kind of time. So what I do instead is I take all the stems whole and I tie the just one around it like this. I'm gonna throw this whole little bouquet in the pot with my onions when I get to that point of the process. And as they, as the soup cooks and simmers, all the little leaves are gonna fall off. They're gonna end up in the soup exactly where I want them. And all the stems are gonna stay tied together here and I can just pull them out at the very end. Um, and they'll be, they'll be completely naked. All the leaves will have fallen off in the soup. Last thing, of course, is you're gonna need a huge stock pot with some butter. So the first thing we're going to do after you've diced all of your onions. I'm gonna get my stock on the stove and I'm going to melt this butter. Once it's nice and hot, I'm gonna get all the onions in and I'm gonna caramel caramelize them until a nice golden brown and I'll be back with you. Hello, welcome back. So my onions are just about caramelized um, to the color that I want them to be. So it's important that you get a really nice browning on those onions. Not only is that gonna develop the sugars that are in those Vidalia onions, but it's also gonna add a lot of depth of flavor to your soup. So let me show you what mine look like. If you can see throughout the scene, there you go. See all those beautiful caramelized onions? So once they get to that point, pretty much as nicely browned as you can get them without them burning in any way, we're gonna go ahead and first to glaze the pan. One thing I forgot to mention, I did not say anything about salt and peppering these onions before you um, caramelize them. You don't want to. Why? Because the salt will draw the liquid content out of the onions and it will impede the process of you being able to get them brown. So wait until after your onions are already browned to add any seasoning. Next, we're gonna go ahead and deglaze the pan with some of that sherry. I've told you a million times before, I use cheap sherry whenever I cook. I use cheap wine when I cook. I don't like to ruin good stuff. So I'm gonna do about a cup of this, about eight ounces. There we go. Stir that in nicely. 
You want to let that go ahead and cook a couple minutes. That's going to burn off the actual alcohol content that's in there and just leave the flavors behind. Then we are going to salt and pepper our soup. We're going to throw in our bundle of thyme that we have. In fact, I'm going to throw it in right now. And then you're going to uh, put your stock in. If you're making your homemade stock like I did, just put a colander over top of the pot of soup and then dump all the remaining contents of your stock pot through that. It'll catch all the pieces of the onions and the mushroom stems and let all the juice fall through into the soup. If you're using regular sorbet broth, go ahead and pour it in once. Uh, it only takes about two minutes. Sorry. Oh, it's this one. That's my broth. There we go. Sorry, that was my breath running over. Um, give it about two minutes for that alcohol to evaporate, then go ahead and deglaze with the rest of your stock. Put that thyme in, season salt and pepper a little bit. Don't be cautious, don't add too much salt up front because what we're gonna do then is turn the soup down to simmer and we're just gonna let all those flavors meld and reduce. Probably close to an hour, you're gonna go ahead and let that simmer. Where, while that does so, it's gonna concentrate on the flavor. So if you season the salt appropriately, right now, to your liking, by the time it reduces and condenses, it's going to be too salty. So try to cut back on that, just do a little bit here um, in the beginning of the process so it can meld in through the cooking process, and then we'll adjust it at the end. Especially if you're using store-bought broth, it's likely to have a lot of extra um, salt in there that's going to also contribute to that factor for your soup. So be mindful of that. I'm just gonna take this off the burner for a second because my broth isn't yet ready. And when it is, I'll come back. I'll strain that and I'll put it back on to simmer. But before I let you go, I wanted to tell you about wine pairing. So if I had my choice of anything, I would pick a red burgundy. Doesn't have to be super expensive. Anything from the Cote de Nuits or Cote d'Or will be perfectly fine. Um, and you can stick with a Negociant. So the one that I, I am going to drink today is from Louis Latour. Uh, Joseph Drewin makes fabulous red burgundies. And you can find a really nice selection between I'd say 18 and $25. I don't have that today. Uh, so instead I'm going to pick just a random Pinot Noir um, from France. This one's from the south of France. So if you were to get red burgundy, it's made from 100% Pinot Noir. It's going to have, uh, it's going to be a, a lighter bodied wine in nature. It's going to have beautiful red cherries. It's going to have some earthy notes to it. Um, a lot of mushroom uh, content in there, a lot of dark cherry in there, which is what I really, you know, love to have with a soup like this. Um, and we're having chicken marsala later today, so it will go perfect with that as well. Um, but again, I don't have that. So I'm going to get one from the south of France. This is also from Louis uh, Latour. Louis Judeau makes really nice ones too. This is just a standard Pinot Noir, however, from the south of France. So because this comes from further south than Burgundy, it's going to be more ripe. It's going to be more berry forward. It's going to be less earthy, a little bit higher alcohol on that. And it's just going to be a little more fruit forward in general. It's going to be fine for what we're having today. It's okay that I don't have exactly what I was looking for. Um, if you're not an old wine world person, Burg um, excuse me, um, Pinot Noir from Oregon. Uh, from Willamette it will be an, another awesome pairing with this. Uh, one other thing I wanted to mention before I let you go is once the soup is finished, so you put your broth in, you let it simmer down and reduce for at least an hour, you adjust the seasoning the way that you'd like it and you're ready to serve. Traditionally, people would put a crostini, you put it into a crock, you put a crostini, you put Gruyere cheese and you throw it in the broiler. I don't like that. I don't want soggy bread in my soup. So what I do instead, and you're welcome to try as well, is I do keep my soup piping hot to put into the crock. However, I do my bread and my cheese separately. So I will slice baguette, I'll toast it quickly in the oven, and then when I'm ready to serve the soup, I'll put Gruyere cheese on top of the baguette, throw that, just the, bag, just the baguette with the cheese under the broiler, let it mount and get all ooey gooey, and then I just place that across the cup, right across the crock of soup. If you then, or my guests then, want to dunk it in and get it all soggy, that's up to them. And if you're like me and that's not your thing, you can just dip it as you go so you still have a nice crusty baguette. But I hope you enjoy and 